Pretty cool stuff, man. Not bad at all. My beard was uh, my beard just and mustache just stops at like seven eight days. It just stops like this. Some of them get stupidly long whiskers, but I wish they could grow cool stuff. All I can grow is like a mustache that makes me look like a pedophile. If I shave all this off, it just ugh, patchy. Anyway. Morning I wake up and my little toe hurts. And it's not even really the toe, it's the space between that toe and the toe beside it. And I mean, yesterday I had my feet in wet shoes, right? Because it takes a while to dry them off. Two days prior to that, they were wet. So it's probably athlete's foot. And I don't really know what I don't have anything to treat that over here. I don't have like tenactin or anything. And uh, yeah, I don't know if moleskin's gonna help or whatever, right? It seems like, yeah. Oh my God. I go to check out in between here, right? There's a rock in between my little toe and this one. Yeah, that'll, uh, that'll make it feel like it's pretty... I mean, there's still a little bit of athlete's foot, right? Not much. I'm gonna have to go and look up. Like, all oh, these are fine. Yeah, this one, it feels like there's a little bit. And underneath that toe. I'm gonna have to do some research and see if I can find some on-trail first aid you can do for athlete's foot. But uh, taking a rock out of there, it definitely helps. Here's an old lesson I forgot too. If you're trying to dry your shoes and you wear uh, like your Crocs, I wore my darn tough socks, but I didn't wear my, you know, my uh, sock liners. I'm not sure if that would, the sock liners would help. But point is the mosquitoes went right through my, you know, without my high boots coming up to here, the mosquitoes really got on my feet. So, yeah, I probably have like 15, 20 bites each. And I mean, mosquitoes go through your clothes, right? Usually the bites don't itch, but when you have bites on top of bites on top of bites, yeah, these ones, they itched. Anyway, I've gotten used to, you know, you get used to everything as far as your clothes, like, you know, my shirts, being all nasty and grubby and stuff. You know, my long underwear is fine. I've just been sleeping with it. Uh, the socks, underwear, all that fun stuff. You know, I'm kind of used to all of it, except for the pants. Like the pants are just nasty, grubby, sweat, like, ugh. <laughs> I don't, you know, every morning I dislike putting them on, but uh, yeah. <laughs> God, look at this. How does this even happen? It changes, it, you know, goes from like, how does that work? That's just, oh my God, these things are, oh man. <laughs> it's another day in the great outdoors with coffee. I'm not real high on sleeping by the river, but uh, the rest of the time is pretty cool. Works for the coffee, the sun is out, you can see the mountains, kinda, through the trees. Yeah. Came down here to get my feet in the water. Gotta walk along the bank a little ways to find a safe place of the river. Quite the view. 
can't find a cloud in the sky. I've been so, so lucky with weather. By the way, the, where the river's breaking over the rocks there, that's pretty much the campsite. I don't have to go down here too far. I can't speak highly enough about putting your knees in the water, man. My knees swell up overnight. You know, they're sore in the morning. I'm walking around, eating my breakfast, getting all that stuff done. Knees in the water, pow, gone. Just gone. It's just, it's almost hard to believe. But yeah, just whew, ready for another day of backpacking, just like that. All right. Time to conquer the last bit. Last chunk of South Boundary Trail before I get to Civilized Trail. Right off the hop, there's a little bridge here. This is the drinking water. I treated it. Now I'm actually a little extra glad that I did. You know, there's a nice little creek going down there, but up here you can see it's all pooly. All right. Nice bridge. 94. Solid job. 26 years. Still doing its thing. Unfortunately, I have no waypoints to look forward to today. So about 8.7 kilometers until a hole in the wall springs. That is a ways. I have absolutely nothing. So just uh, do my thing, hike, take rests. I'll get there eventually. I had to go around this big tree and uh, I almost missed the fact of this little bridge here, which is now guarding really nothing. Anyway, the trail is in just as good a shape as it was yesterday. I think uh, Astoria Outfitters came down to go, I said that a couple of times I think already. Astoria Outfitters came down this way and they went up to uh, Sawtooth Cabin. To deal with those cameras so it really helps and so it's in nice shape trees are cut i had to jump over some stuff but not much well had a bit of a climb you can see how far down the river is but uh and the trail is just down here but i saw this opening and the farther i walked the better the view got it's awesome Things are starting to open up. Forest is getting a little bigger. Well, that's pretty cool. Makes it a lot easier, mental-wise. Kind of a curious sight. The size of this monster. There's one, two, three, four. I have a funny feeling I'm gonna to come to a bridge pretty quick because, I mean, they just cut them down out of nature, right? Come out and play, it's dinner time. Come on bears. Yeah. Not super clear about where to go. I'll try straight across. You know, it just occurred to me, I never saw where those, what those trees, especially that massive one, how did that get swallowed? It's not that they're cut down, it's that they're gone. All right, there's no corpses on the ground. All right, well, let's see where I can cross this thing. I'm gonna cross on that one. I'm not sure how super smart that was. I got reminded of on the North Bounty Trail when I got kind of cocky. Whew. And I got kind of cocky and then I slipped off a bridge and half went in the water. This stupid moment. All right, now where do I go? So the trail is coming out over here somewhere. I crossed on the two little you know, trees that are just around this corner. And you gotta come down here. 
There was nothing to indicate that. So, I built a cairn. Not sure, you know. The thing about building cairns is you never know. And it's not like you ever see if they're gonna come, you know. You can't see if it's gonna survive a winter or not because it's not like I'm coming back here. But, uh, well, you know, there it is. Hopefully it helps somebody. Awesome. I actually have a meadow to walk through. Amazing how fast I start missing this. It's only been a few days since I was in Sawtooth Valley getting this a lot, but once you're in trees for 25 kilometers for the most part, yeah, this is sweet. It's not gonna last long, it appears, but it's opening up more and more. I love it. Well, stopping here for a break is a complete no-brainer. This is the first time you get a great shot of the Brazo, except for at a wreck cabin. And been hiking up this valley for like 30 kilometers. Really cool color, this Brazo River, man. It's a nice river. And today you have good trail and good views. This is wicked. Sweet. I think I'm coming to a water source. That's only the second one today. Yesterday was the same thing. There's not a lot of places to get water. And considering my water, water bladder has failed, I can only carry one liter at a time, so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. I'll take water out of that. Well, I've lost the trail. On a track that seems to have blazes all along it, suddenly when you need them the most, they're not there. I got a backtrack here. This is just an ending swamp. I gotta think the trail climbed above this at some point. Top the animals tramp it down. Other hikers like me tramp down, you know, and they lose their way. Not real sure. Gotta find it. Okay. I've backtracked and I've found pretty much in you know, like as far as I'm concerned for sure what the trail was. I need to come down here. Yeah. And do what? <laughs> I mean, yuck. All right, I backtracked. Back there, the trail seems to break off in a fork. And here's an old chopped down tree. You walk up there, there's just nothing. There's nothing. You know, I did that earlier. Came up here, found nothing. No trail, no no blazes at all. There's about six million blazes on this trail on completely obvious trail. Like no one cares about those blazes. I hear there's zero. Zero anywhere. And this is, you can really use some. So I've definitely lost the trail. I've uh, come through some of the bog, which was kind of down there. That's sort of where I was tracking before. I feel like maybe that was on a trail that like a bunch of moose and deer had made or something. Dumped my bag here, I went up there a little ways and now I've come down here a little ways. I think that's all I can do is move forward and every so often just stop and take a good look around and try and find the trail. I have a general idea where I'm going, right? So, I just remembered I have, uh, how was the hike? Uh, Gaia track. Now it's not totally dependable but it gives me something to work with and it's showing the trail is up there off to my right so hey man use all the tools you got. All right so start tracking this way and uh, see if I can come across it. There got her back. There's a blaze. I must have lost it even farther back than I had tracked. I tra like yeah. Oh well. 
I was uh, maybe about 20 meters off over here. No worries. I'm surprised that happened. I didn't expect any excitement today. But hey, you know, breaks things up. Look at that. From where I lost the trail, I was like three minutes away from the hole in the wall of springs. All right, let's go get a look at these. That is cool. There's three of them. That one there, you really don't get a good shot of. This one here, I'm gonna climb up and get a shot. It's hole in the wall. It's coming straight out of the rock. Okay, so I got a shot of that one after all. And here we go. Right out of the rock. Pretty cool stuff, man. Not bad at all. Well, there's kind of a crossing here coming off another one. I crossed on this tree, but a branch I stepped on broke under me and I got a, a dunk to boot in. Well, I'm getting impatient, right? I don't want to take off my shoes and all that fun stuff. I just want to, here, another one, easy. I just want to get her going. I feel like I'm close to home and yet I'm 35 kilometers away, so. Well, I should be getting to a horse camp here pretty quickly. Uh, well, okay. All right then, I don't think this is it, but I think this might be uh, where a trail joins from like the Job Klein over there. Huh, all right then. Wow, did I find some remains or what? It was all feathers. And two big horns. This is where, uh, yeah, this is where one came to die. Hmm. Okay, I had no idea. Or I think maybe I, I read it at some point, but, but I was coming into another burn. Yeah, it's pretty unmistakable, I'd say. It's already over, it lasted five minutes. I think it's pretty obvious now that I've missed uh, Brazo. What the? Trail? Trail. I was literally just going to say that I think I, lost, I missed Brazo Meadows horse campground. And now I think this is it. I'll be damned. I was almost sure that I had missed Brazo Meadows campground. And yet here it is with a picnic table. Oh my God, heaven. Okay, coming to the woods a little bit and you got one of the most, this is the most creative hitching post I've ever seen. It's just huge. Or is it supposed to be for a tent? I don't know. I followed a trail out the back and it leads out to this. This is where the horses come and eat. What do they get a hell of a view for eating? You even got a nice green throne. Nothing wrong with that action. Very, very sad. There was once a box here for, I'm assuming for, uh, yeah, for a register. It's been, it is now done. And uh, yeah, there's a rope. No book hanging around on the ground. It's a damn shame. Would have been awesome. I'm gonna 
use this glorious picnic table to have some soup. This makes me sad. It's been uh, increasingly, it's been making me sad since I've been looking at all. I mean, clearly this is an elaborate horse campground. It's had a lot of love. It's had a lot of chainsaw work done. There's stumps everywhere. There's old corrals. There's all kinds of stuff. But, you know, ever since the, uh, the attitude, you know, the government made a lot of cuts and the attitude changed to parks for profit. I mean, it's just a shell. The backcountry has no profit in it, right? It's just all about the tourists and uh, the big tour bus. And, you know, the stuff where people walk three or 400 meters from their car. Gotta make massive, massive parking lots for that. No money for the backcountry. Such a nice view. The river's not like raging by here. It's just nice floating. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. That flying crew from 94. They did impressive work, man. They knew what they were doing because this is, looks like it's gonna stand for, you know, years to come, all right? 26 years old already. Yeah, still really solid. Well, no horse gap from this year. You can't blame the horse parties for abandoning the parks, right? I mean, uh, they don't wanna be uh, spending five, six hours of their day, day clearing out firewood right clearing uh, trees trails off the trees off the trail just walking back on the trail and yeah gotta love those grassy hillsides man they are beautiful well, there's been beat up old fencing for a while seems totally pointless here usually that means the cabin's coming right away but it's in this case, it's been a big tease because in my experience, that's for them to keep the horses at least kind of contained so they don't have this ridiculous jingle in the morning where they're looking for their horses for two hours, right? Because they want an optic kingdom come. And that's what, eh, that's what it used to be in the old days, right? They had time to maintain this big, long fence to keep their horses going. It's just going and going and going. Oh, here we go. Here's a main fence. All right, now I'm at the warden cabin. I guess this fence is still going because, you know, they've made it so that you actually have to move logs and stuff to get in. Nice. This one's the district headquarters, I believe. There's a register. Awesome. Oh, and the window's open. Oh, the, the door's locked, though. I can hear some clanging. So is there something, like, hanging over there? Interesting. This definitely settles the, uh, the three and then the one. It's a fence, but it's a... Uh, Flag post, there's absolutely no question. And a pump. I don't know when the last time I saw a pump was. No. Oh. Big yellow, uh, there's a few, a few things going on here. Oh yeah. It's a big old intersection. Cool. Oh my God, there's a warden now here because that clanging is horses. And there's a building hiding back here too. Yeah. This is a district headquarters, so this is pretty elaborate, right? So this is another way they, uh, they keep track of them, right? They put bells on them like cowbells so that they can find them. This one's actually coming up to me for a sniff. Hey, 
How are you? Hmm? Hmm? Clang, 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 clang. Aw. I don't want to pet your nose. I know that's kind of... See, he's cobbled. All right, so they can't get too, too, too far. They can still walk, but they can't, like, go ripping around. Well, you're not my horses, so I'm not going to bother you too much. Well, this must be, like, the old Brazo cabin or something, because I don't know what it would be for. Look at the giant step you got to take to get in. Huh. see that normally this thing has the electric fence around it but since the warden is here it's uh, not up I feel like there's someone inside there but I don't know I don't want to knock well while I was hanging out there at the cabin the warden came back I mean we knew it was here horses are there and uh, I had the longest conversation I had, uh, you know, I learned so much from the guy. Once you heard I got a sawtooth, he was like, okay, <laughs> you went there willingly on your own? That's, that's pretty, yeah. So then I told him that I wanted to see the other warden cabin and he started giving me advice. Awesome, this is awesome. I learned so much. Oh. Oh, it's been like an hour and a half or something. <laughs> I'm gonna get off to campground now. Okay. Old bridge, new bridge, or at least newer. We're gonna cross that tomorrow. I Brazo River, 50 kilometers. Boy, I sure hope not. Maybe I'm gonna cross it now. What's with these numbers now? This is, this civilized world is strange. Numbers on diamonds. Ugh. All right. No, I'm missing a banister. Not bad, man. really no view of Brazo River campground but and the water source is actually you cross the river you cross the bridge because the river's just too high on this side you go to the other side but oh man with bear with uh, bear cans bear boxes I should say and oh picnic tables oh my god anyway I met a couple there, we're just yapping it up, and they actually knew of me from the other couple who they met last night at their other campground. This spot has a number, an actual square made for me. I don't have to go looking around. <laughs> it's, this is weird. I think I found what's supposed to be the real Maybe this is supposed to be the actual water source. Looks pretty nice. Well, it's nice to get conversation, that's for sure. And back to civilization. Actual people, real sights. It's nice. Elevates the spirit. Uh, tomorrow we'll have to report points. Good night.